For our coding, just like we did with our circuits, we've started off with the boom gate code already in there as that's covered in another video. So we've created a boom gate object. This time we've attached it to pin three and we're writing to the boom gate to move to 90 degrees and then writing it to move back to zero after a short wait and then wait again before lifting it again. So we'll run that simulation. You can see the boom gates operating, it's going up and down. Okay, so now we wanna set up our ultra ultrasonic sensor. So first of all, we need to set up these two pins, the triggering and the echo pin. So we'll say our trig pin is on pin 10 and our echo pin is on pin nine. Now we're going to need a couple of other variables as well. We're going to need the duration. So that's the amount of time it takes for that echo to reach the object and come back. Because when we read that from the sensor, we're going to need to put it somewhere. So we're going to put it into a variable. Now this time it's not going to be an int. It's going to be what's called a long. A long is a number that can have a decimal place. So, so far we've been using integers, which are just whole numbers. A long can have something after the decimal place, such as 3.5 or 3.876 or something like that. Anything with a decimal place needs to be what's called a floating point number. A long is a very long floating point number, so we can hold really big numbers that have decimal places. So we're going to need, not during, duration. So we're going to need something to store that duration. We're then going to convert that duration into distance. So we will get back from the ultrasonic sensor how long it took the waves, the ultrasonic waves, to reach the object and bounce back. So then we're going to do a little calculation which I'll give you, which then takes that time and converts it to a distance, which is the useful number that we actually want to get to. Okay, now we're going to have to set the pin modes. So the pin mode for the trigger pin, well trigger is an output because we want to say, okay, you can now start sending signals. And the pin mode for the echo pin is an input because that's when we're going to read in how long did that take to go between triggering and when you received back that signal. Okay, so now we're into the main loop. We've set everything up. The first thing we're going to do is we want to clear out any previous information from that sensor. So it, we don't want to have any leftover timing information from the last time we used it. So what I'll do is I'll do a digital write to the trig pin and set it to low. And I'll just delay two microseconds, so that's virtually nothing. It's not even a blink of an eye. That's such a short period of time, but that's enough time to make sure that write takes effect and that the sensor is clear. So I'm just gonna put a little note in here. We haven't covered this so far, but we're going to start putting in what's called comments. So when I go back and look at my code in the future, a lot of this is obvious. So up until now, we probably haven't needed comments, but when we start doing more complicated things, we put in some notes for ourselves in the future. So this we can put reset the sensor. So if I put two forward slashes here, what that does is that tells C++ that this is this little bit of text is for me. It's an indication for me in the future when I'm going back and looking at what my code is. It's not an instruction. So this isn't part of the code. Okay, this is just a note that I'm putting in for myself. And it's very important you put good comments in because when you come back and look at your code in the future, you might have complicated things or things you're not sure, you can't remember how they work. So we put in comments as we go. So now we want to actually send out some signals. So we want to start the process of actually triggering a, uh, a wave to go out and then we want to read in the bounce back. So we'll go start sending signals out. And we wait, the way we do that is we'll do a digital write to the trig pin on high. So we start sending things out. We want to delay 
in microseconds. 10 microseconds. So that will give it enough time to be sending out signals for 10 microseconds. Seconds. And then what we want to do is turn that back off so it stops sending out those ultrasonic signals. So on our trig pin, we set that back to low. So essentially what we've done is we've done a little burst for 10 microseconds. We've been sending out ultrasonic frequency out into that range. And then the last thing we want to do to actually be able to get the reading is read in the time it took to receive the signal back. Okay, so we want to put that into our duration variable. So we've put our a variable up here, duration. So we're now going to read back from our sensor what it measured. So we did a little burst of sending out signals and now we're going to read back in the duration that it timed to actually get those signals back. So we'll store that into our duration variable. So we're going to use a special function here. We can't just do a digital read because it's not going to read back high or low. It's actually going to send us back this big long number and it's going to do it by pulsing. So pulsing is setting high and low, high and low, high and low, kind of like Morse code. You send this pulse back and that will end up being a number for us. So we call this function pulse in. We're going to read from the echo pin and set that to high. So when we say echo pin high with pulse in, that will read in that duration for us. Okay, and we now have the amount of time it took back, took to get that message back. Now we're going to convert the time to distance. So we've got that distance now, or that duration. Uh, sorry, the time, the duration is the time. We're going to convert that to centimeters. So now this is where we use our second variable. And I'm just going to give you the calculation. You can just use this every time that you want to use the sensor. So we won't go through what the maths actually is. So it's duration divided by two divided by 29.1. So that will convert the amount of time it took, the duration to get that signal back. That'll convert that into an actual distance in centimeters for us. Okay, at this point, all this code here that has reset the sensor so we don't have any old information and this is really where the ac action happens. We've set the sensor to high to trigger it. It starts sending out waves for 10 microseconds and then we set it to low to stop sending out those signals. It will then read in how long it took for those signals to bounce back. That's all built into the sensor. And then we want to go ask it to please give us that information back that it's recorded. So we say as a pulse, not as a, just a high or a low, so it's not just a digital read. It's actually going to send us a number. It's going to send us this number, this long, that has a decimal place. So we're going to store that into duration. And then the last thing we do is we convert that time into distance by right running this little calculation here. So now we have the distance something is from that ultrasonic sensor. At this point, we want to determine whether to put the gate up or put the gate down. So whenever we have to make a, de a decision in C++, in programming, we have to use that if statement. So in this case, we want to check if the distance is within a certain range. So if the distance is less than 150 centimeters, that's the distance that I used for the example at the beginning when we ran this. In the case where the distance is less than 150 centimeters, then I want to lift the boom gate. So I can bring that boom gate right line up to here. Okay, so if there's an object within 150 centimeters of the, center of the sensor here, then I want to lift that boom gate. Okay, but what if there's not something within that distance? Well, in that case, we want to keep the boom gate closed or we want to close it if it's not already closed. But just like in a real car park, I want to have a little bit of a delay there because once the car leaves that area, we still don't want the boom gate to just immediately bang down on top of the car. We want to give it time to leave the sensor area, make sure it's definitely safe, and then we'll lower the boom gate again. So we don't need this last delay here. Get rid of that. Okay, so we've read in our distance. 
We've used this code here to determine the distance. And then we check how far away that distance is. If it's less than 150, we want to lift the boom gate. If it's more than 150, we'll wait a little bit and then we'll drop the boom gate. So let's run that simulation now once again and check that all our code is working. The boom gate will lift and close likely. Oh, we've got a problem here. Oh, that's because we've spelt it wrong. So we've got digit right instead of digital right. And it looks like I've done that here as well. Okay, we've started our simulation and the gate has lifted. So let's have a look at what our ultrasonic sensor is reading. Yep, because it's less than 150 centimeters, we've got 113 here or 44 inches. That's within the area, it's less than 150, so the boom gate has lifted. I'll now move this back out of that 150 area and you can see the boom gate closes. Okay, so we've got our simulation working. I'll bring it in within 150 and the boom gate opens. So as long as that remains in that sensor area, we're going to keep the boom gate at 90 degrees. I'll move that out and it will wait a short delay and then it will close the boom gate again. So it will wait and then it closes.